Hi, my name is Henry Shudikaya. I'm a French Canadian psychotherapist, hypnotherapist, and my special field of interest and study is brainwashing and mind control by cults. Today I continue my review of the book Killing for Krishna by Henry Dartovsky. I would like to focus on one of the main character in the book, Kirtan Ananda Swami. I knew that Kirtan Ananda was a homosexual, but reading the book of Henry, you realize that he was not only an homosexual, but he was a pervert of the worst kind. Kirtan Ananda, or Keith M, came to the Hare Krishna movement in 1966 with his longtime lover, Howard Wheeler, whose name became Hare Griva. Henry is telling us that before coming to the Hare Krishna movement, these two were living together and not only did they act sex together, but for a while they had an African-American teenager of 17 year old that they kept in their apartment like a sex slave, an exchange of food and lodging. They would use him for sex. Henry also tells us that uh, Keith M would go in the subway stations of New York City and had sex with all kinds of strangers in the toilets of the New York subway stations. When they came to Krishna consciousness in 1966, it was clear that these two were like a couple, but it seemed that Swami Bhaktivedanta just looked the other way. Maybe try to help by giving sannyas or by making Keith M take vows of celibacy for a complete lifetime. That turned out to be a joke. Over as many years as a guru starting in 1977 it seemed that Keith M never stopped having sex with men never stopped having sex with the friends of Howard Wheeler that he would bring up from Mexico. They would be temporary workers, but they would have party and he would have sex with them. And even worse, it is now revealed by Henry that Keith M had sex with the children of New Vrindavan. They told him that he has received fellatios from Keith M. This was not only a homosexual, a pedophile, this was a pervert of the worst kind. And one wonders how did no one reported this for years and years and years while he was the spiritual master of the largest community of the Hare Krishna movement in America with more than 500 members. This is a guy that would also take drugs in secrets. This is a guy that would have sex with children in secret and then would come and sit on a throne and tell his followers that they should not have sex at all if they were monks, brahmachari, and 
they should have sex only to reproduce if they were married otherwise no sex at all this is a guy that would tell his followers that three things benefit from a good beating a drum a dog and your wife and there was a lot of wife beating in New Vrindavan. So the lesson here is do not follow anyone because someone is telling you that this guy or this lady is a very spiritually advanced person. You have to use your heart, you have to use your brain, you have to investigate, you have to ask questions. Otherwise, it is easier than you think to be brainwashed by a cult. There is, at this moment, many Hare Krishna gurus all around the world that have no spiritual realization and that demand that their disciple should obey them should serve them, should give them money, should give them their time 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. It is a true scandal. I hope that this video that I'm making might awake a few, deprogram a few. I really recommend people to read the book of Henry Killing for Krishna. Henry was in the Hare Krishna New Vrindavan community for 15 years and I believe sincerely that writing this book, researching this book has been a great therapy for himself and it might be a great therapy and a deprogramming process if you feel that you are following some sort of spiritual authority some sort of a guru that is telling you that you should obey because he knows better than you do so pick up the book and get informed there is no better way to learn about brainwashing than by someone who admit that he was brainwashed for more than 15 years. Thank you very much.